uh, maybe we can actually start. I give us your perspective on the the work so far in terms of like high level key pieces that you think could or just tell me the the key pieces and we'll try to connect them to the three other teams. Uh, excuse me, can you repeat the question? <laughs> So, so what are imagine, the key pieces of our work? Yes, the work that you've produced so far, from my understanding, it's uh, basically data sets, time series data sets that relate yeah. to geospatial uh, types of, uh, you know, information. Yeah, uh, we, we are not uh, as uh, close to the goal of uh, what we has, have met at the beginning, but the original was to have for a set of countries that we choose uh, to be United States, Spain, Italy, and South Korea, uh, the census to have the population age distribution and the, and the geographical distribution, like where are the people uh, everywhere, uh, the uh, COVID cases that are reported, and uh, also uh, information regarding the meteorology, uh, information regarding uh, the transportation and when the um, lockdown and social distancing policies have been implemented. Okay. Okay. Uh, because, uh, well, <laughs> some of them were considered uh, at the beginning of the original task uh, to be considered, like, for example, like, uh, what's the, the, the affecting of the population density or stuff like that. So we considered, and some of them came uh, from petitions from either uh, task um, risk or task ties. So mostly we have been uh, working on providing data that they consider to be useful. Uh, and because well, when we lost uh, like that point, uh, we, the, 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 when we knew that we don't have a proper task for us, so we, we shifted our focus to that. Uh, and also there have been a small NLP team that uh, I was explaining uh, was uh, trying to localize the clinical trials that have been done and to put geographical, the, adding the, geographic, the geographical dimension to uh, all the clinical trials and maybe to other stuff that has been done because, because uh, it can, well, we consider that uh, it could be uh, at least interesting but useful for sure. And that is, um, so we basically have a data set uh, of clinical trials per regions, right? Like states or like specific? Well, this is, this is still in the works because uh, the fact that the NLP team hasn't been able to produce any um, let's say valid results, uh, at okay. least that I'm aware of. But the output but they, would be uh, kind of distribution of clinical trials per areas. For example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we have Daniel joining us. Okay. So uh, what I'm hearing, you have basically a limited list of countries, right? Um, yes, well, most, some of the data sources that we are using are worldwide. worldwide. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, meteorological information we can gather from any country with just changing parameters that we are passing to the data source. Uh, some of the COVID cases are so we have a small granularity on a worldwide level. I thought we are focusing just on some countries. Mm -hmm. But the census, for example, uh, it came from governmental sources. Uh, we have to make them country by country. So it's not like we, there is no worldwide census, and that's why we cannot have yeah. that at the level. Makes sense. If, we, if we could, we we have we will try to have it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Daniel, thanks for for jumping in. So let hey, me. Oh yeah, I just I just saw your message. <laughs> no problem. Um, let me summarize the uh, what Manuel just uh, explained to us and see how how you know uh, your point of view is in terms of that. So what you guys currently have is a limited subset of countries that uh, you have some uh, time series and geospatial data on, right? And then there is a separate kind of uh, task with NLP team that is trying to produce the geospatial data out of the clinical tri trials from the data set. Right, so just a couple of, uh, of things on that. Um, we also have some data that we have globally, like a number of cases. We have uh, we have it globally at decent granularity, and then we are sourcing some alternative data sources for uh, different countries where you can have more granularity or stuff like that. Um, like per state, right? 
Well, we, we have even more. For example, for a number of cases in the US, we have at county level. Mm, okay. Makes sense. Okay. Right, but uh, you know, it depends a bit on the source. So that's why we're considering different sources. Um, and then, yes, for uh, data that we need to source country by country, uh, we are focusing mostly on US, Italy, Spain, um, South Korea, and now we've started with Sweden since they are uh, using a different approach than all the other countries, just going for uh, herd immunity. And uh, on the other stream, so our NLP people, right now they are focusing on helping the other teams as well to classify papers in different types, like a clinical tests, in vitro tests, uh, simulations. Is Michael Ayers, the bioinformatics guy, working on that too? Mm, I'm not sure. I mean, they have a channel. It's called Paper Study Design Annotation. Mm. Oh, I'll check that out. Uh, what's the name of that person? Michael Ayers. In... No. Oh, yes, yeah, he's in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, right, because that's, that's a, a blocker for various teams right now. And uh, it's also something that we need for uh, um, geoinformation from the papers, because depending on the type of study, you have more or less interesting um, data because for example if it's a simulation you don't care where it was done mm -hmm. but you care where the data comes from if it's a clinical uh, study you care the, about the hospital where it was done for example makes sense okay so here's what i propose as an exercise because like i already see some patterns in terms of how we can connect it to uh, various notebooks and mm -hmm. like i think it's our goal to make those individual like three tasks much stronger in terms of submissions yes. equipping Absolutely. them with the stuff that you guys produce so how about we start with the risk factors as the easiest one and the one that you guys already work with so mm -hmm. let me share my screen not sure if you've seen this diagram that um Ansun produced but that's kind of the high level structure of everything that they've done so far right have you seen it i think i've seen it yes okay so they have risk factors and they have demographical which is uh, searching for population density uh, then they have age related stuff general stuff uh, not sure oh that that is not really the like the risk factor this is just the general work that they've done climate related, temperature, humidity, uh, pollution, and then there is disease related, which is heart disease, uh, pre-existing conditions, and comorbidities. To me, it sounds like the, the best and low hanging fruit is this and this for the integration with you guys. What do you think? Yes. Um... Let me see. Well, it depends on uh, on what are the conclusions because I think right now we are well positioned to provide data uh, supporting hypotheses about the spread of the virus, about mortality rates a bit less because we don't know much about, uh, the, for example, age, sex, underlying condi um, conditions of uh, hospitalized patients. Mm -hmm. so we don't really have that data. What kind of age related data do you have? Do you have average, uh, like, or um, what's it called? For example, for Italy, we have age distribution in the population. Nice. Okay. By so, municipality and year. Yes. So it's not bracket. So for each town, we know how many people were uh, with, uh, with each, uh, with each yes, age. It, it's very granular. Okay. So basically, the first, like, most immediate thing that we can do is linking the age-related risk factors to uh, some nice visualizations of connection between the population density and age uh, to the number of cases, right? Yeah, the thing is that, yeah, the thing is that, uh, well, this should be, an, um, well, it will take time, but it's not uh, that hard. Uh, the census data, it has not, I'm not sure, but I think it has not uh, the location, so the distribution, the special distribution is not available right now. We are working on. Well, I know. I mean, I, I have the 
OpenStreetMap code, uh, I can just, you know, grab the locations quite easily. You mean the names by the geo? Long to the left? Yeah, essentially we only have the name of the place. We don't have the geographical coordinates oh, yeah, that's but needed reverse, by DataViz. But that, that, that's doable. That's yeah, doable. it should be easy. Okay. Um, all right. Well, this sounds like the low-hanging fruit. Uh, maybe like... But so, sorry, Arthur, but as I said, so if this gives us information, I mean, it can give us probably more information about mortality, I would expect. I don't know exactly what they extracted, right? But um, something that's probably needed is also the kind of distribution of age of hospitalized patients. Yeah, but that's... Like that. And, and that's, that's much more difficult to obtain because it's the kind of data that usually is kept private. I mean, I don't think we'll be able to do that by the first submission. Uh, yeah, no. I can say that we have potential to do it by the second submission, given all the, we have calls with hospitals that want to share their data to build some diagnostic tools and uh, predictive mm -hmm. engines. So it's, it's possible, we just need to figure out the proper, you know, partnership and the data sharing yes. mechanisms or something, anonymizing that data and yeah, sometimes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I mean, we can provide the data about uh, age distribution in, in Italy, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so makes sense. So I see it. Let's imagine the risk factors will have the section about the age-related risk factors. And then at the end of that section, there will be a nice visualization of the uh, distribution um, of, of cases and population de density, distribution of ages, per major areas of interest being Italy, uh, US and those other ones. Does that sound like a good, like high level integration? Well, as I said, I mean, it's certainly a good possibility. It very much depends on what um, the age related risk factors that, yeah. that are obtained by, by yeah. the risk and, team. And of course, we're gonna have a call with the risk factors team after this to kind of go through the same exercise and understand how they see the integration. But so far, like I have a, a good picture in, in my mind. Again, mm -hmm. also subject to uh, priorities. Maybe uh, there are other pieces of, of this that are more important. So, so I, I think one that we could potentially provide is a uh, climate related data. Okay. Right, Manuel? Uh, we don't hear you You're muted. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I said that uh, right now the pollution, uh, we haven't even started uh, looking for it, but the temperature- No, but humidity, is... humidity temperature. Yeah, yeah this is, this is uh, mostly done. It can be available for tomorrow. Nice. So this should be, and also, uh, well, I haven't uh, uploaded to the GitHub repo, but yesterday before going to sleep, I was able to generate all the data sets with the correct metadata and the audit files and upload them both to Kaggle and to Google Cloud on my account. So oh, it should, all there is missing right now is to have the credentials to upload to the CoronaY bucket. And uh, I have already the API, the API K uh, for the corona Y data set, so and it should be also. Hi. So, what corona Y bucket are you talking about, Manuel? The one Brandon set up, or the no, no, no that was his it? personal bucket. I think that we talk about that. Uh -huh. But you, you told me that uh, you asked me in which account I wanted to, uh, you, I wanted to manage the. Yeah, yeah. The so, console. have you had I troubles with? Any... Uh... Excuse me. So, have you had troubles working with the corona Y dash geo, like? I, I, I haven't I haven't got access to to that because I thought that will be uh, I will be receiving a mail so I haven't checked it uh, until now I okay. just use my own uh, bucket just for the test mm -hmm. because it was not no no okay I mean, I mean we just change the bucket and then upload everything it just so if you have run any trouble just again immediately message me and then we'll deal with the permission yeah no but I, is, I mean I wanted to to make sure that everything on my part is finished and then uh, mm -hmm. we can talk about this yeah, for the sure. integration, I got uh, Arthur's uh, APIK, so it should be fine. It should be a no-brainer. I mean, uh, we talk about uh, not. Uh, sorry, one second. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Um, yes, uh, that we will not be uploading uh, uh, data sets to Kaggle until they're on their final version. So it won't be what uh, I will. Uh, I will be just uploading on Google Storage for now to have it available for our team, but not uh, for anyone else. But it is, both of them should be ready uh, by tomorrow. Amazing. And yeah, I feel if we can tackle those two, the age-related stuff and the uh, humidity and other climate data, that's plenty for the first submission. I don't think we should buy more unless you guys have a strong opinion that there should be something else, the third one. No, I think this will uh, keep our hands quite full. Um, yeah. Honestly, yeah. Okay. So I have a quick question again, probably again, not for this submission, but for future, we'll definitely do something like sophisticated regarding like how to exchange this data with the rest of the teams, especially if it's time series, right? So we need to kind of update it somehow. So currently, right, it's some form of a CSV file or something like this, right? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm thinking about like maybe s later on to set up some form of a, like a database that's really suitable for essentially mind geospatial like location. You mean like something. querying instead of downloading? Yeah, so we could do like a query. Like name, Oracle example, or something like, like that? I mean, we can use Big Table. I've, I've used it for a large uh, data sets. And it's we are not having so much learned data sets that all the extra work that Big yeah, Table yeah, must imply. I mean, just uh, a simple SQL uh, database mm. with a REST API that I'm was actually, for querying. I'm actually even thinking than, maybe for geolocation, something like a, like a MongoDB could be better. So we could slap some web app developers guys for visualization if we want to do something on top of the data. Yeah, Geo location, Geo index. like queries, a really good one. Geoindex for MongoDB is great. Mm -hmm. But again, how big the data is. But I probably not for this week for sure. But, no, yeah, yeah, we, but we should start thinking about that as well. I think that we don't, I mean, I think that the biggest uh, thing that said we have, it doesn't, well, is the NOAA one when you do with the FTP, but it's like when you Well, potentially, but, in general, I mean, also if we use NAS, I, very much depends on the granularity at which we go, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, but what I mean is, uh, with full granularity, but I mean, on the on the meteorological data, we don't load uh, like the whole year file and then we extract it. Uh, but beyond that, uh, the pure data set once it's clean, we don't have uh, data sets beyond one million rows. Uh, yeah. So well, in terms of granular, oh, potentially, yeah. I I think would be no, good not, yeah. to create this kind of the. Uh, aggregate layer, even like if we're going to use MongoDB, just using the aggregate framework to pre-create the quick uh, data sets that are, you know, different different levels of granularity. So, you know, producing dynamic reports that are easy to query versus... Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, yeah. Once we got the, if we have the data with the same format, that has been one of the things that we are trying to fight with the team to to achieve. Uh, once we got that doing uh, any kind yeah, of aggregation or anything can be done with data pipelines easily in automated way. So it's... Makes sense. All right. I so another thing is, yeah. so we're sourcing all this data, but uh, I, I think it would be nice to use it also at some point. So it would be nice to have experts on board and, uh, you know, a real principal investigator to direct us to do um, reasonable analysis. It needs to be a researcher in the correct field. Because, yep. I mean, I, I can set up whatever, but uh, then it, it doesn't make exactly. sense. It's, and I think we have those people already, like that epidemiologist that I interviewed. He would be perfect to integrate. I think the timeline goes, at least in my mind, we prepare everything for submission, we submit it, and then we have a couple of calls with the medical experts to actually you know, validate our assumptions, produce some meaningful you know, updates to the notebooks. And then we have that webinar, post-submission webinar, where we actually integrate their feedback and kind of pro project their reasoning um, on, on top of our submissions. Does it make sense? No, but but this this is really something more direct contact with us because I mean I don't want to do a random analysis and then have feedback and then maybe do something else and then in a few months none that in my opinion wouldn't work very well. 
to can really a specific example so i can better understand. i don't know for example if we want we have papers that say okay um those five factors are potentially influence the speed of the spread of the virus right okay let's test this but how to do it correctly what variables do we have to control for and and so on yeah. and Makes yes man Yes, we, that one of the things that uh, we knew, at least I understand by reading the the, the Kaggle competition uh, uh, guidelines, is that we are just to process the original data set, maybe add additional data, but we are not to discuss or to generate new hypotheses. So we have uh, refrained to do so for the moment. Yeah. But one, after we got all the data, if we, for example, uh, find with after the first submission, we got determined which are the most influential risk factors and most influential transmission uh, um, ways. I don't know if it's the correct word. Then making transmission models or making uh, stuff like that could be useful. As yeah, I think I, I think I'm, what's important to discuss is the fact that. The first submission is really about what literature reports about stuff and we're just augmenting it with all kinds of data. We're not really making any assumptions or... Absolutely. Know, uh, exactly. no, we, what... we perfectly agree on this, but this is something that goes uh, beyond the Kaggle competition. Yes. yes. Right? But we should start to have those experts on board because if you want to do the whole process, if you want to go in a direction of research in collaboration with experts that's something that takes time and we cannot start like oh let's start it now and in one week we're done right it's yeah not yep. like sourcing one data set we have a call with um with a, a surge uh, epidemiologist next week so we want to start that process the problem is that people like him are you know consumed with all kinds of requests so we're of course. Again, juggling the the priorities and onboarding him as fast as we can. Hopefully we get more people like him. And yes, I agree, that's a priority. Right, but I mean, I would frame it non, not in, the, in terms of uh, an epidemiologist working for us, but more us working for the epidemiologist. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. One of the, of the things that we have thought is like, for example, if we, right now with team risk or team transmission or what team BT are doing is just uh, by, uh, gathering data around hypothesis like for example uh, VT like is uh, retro beer effective uh, against coronavirus and they grab all the papers who say yes all the papers who say no so somebody can have like a summary of all that but for for example things that are related to geographical uh, information or hypothesis like for example how the virus is transmitted Hypothesis, a paper that was published on January. Maybe somebody want to uh, take that model, that hypothesis, and say, "Okay, I got more data. I want to recheck it." It's not our work to do so, but at least, yes. But yes, it may be your work to provide all the tools and all the data to do it. Yeah. I don't know if that if this makes sense for you, but I mean, if, if we gather uh, distraction and this uh, public attention, uh, there will be people. I'm sure that there will be people from the academic world who can. Uh, in use the, the, the things that we built to validate uh, other hypotheses, to discard them, to f improve their analysis. Uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what. Hundred percent. And I just want to to bring uh, like a little bit of um, like context and awareness into the fact that we have all of these amazing people contacting that us, but we haven't yet established a proper uh, process to transform tax speak into math speak and someone who can you know, bridge these things. Because it is very hard, and when doctors join, or epidemiologists join our Slack, they're overwhelmed. Like they have no idea what's going on, and we need very single like person channel to streamline that. And for example, like there is this uh, person that uh, works at Rockefeller University, and she has uh, like 18 labs or something of virologists and epidemiologists and other people and she asked me like are you guys ready to to engage with us and i told her give us a couple more days to figure it out because i can imagine them being onboarded and just lost and us being like lost in, in all of this communication yeah, yeah so sense? to expand on this idea a little bit essentially this is how i see what we do right now for first submission right this is our beta test we're just building the small pipelines that we have right as a building blocks for something bigger. And 
to, to expand on this kind of like working with professionals, right? In a sense, we will need to create that bridge. And for example, like it's not just about us providing, right? It's a CSV file or something. It should be some maybe web app or something for them to explore. Currently we use Power BI, but it's right now I'm considering this as a, just like a plug in place because we don't have bandwidth to create our own visualization, but later on we will for sure. I already spoke with a couple of people who are like web developers and they want to do that. We have D3JS people. So we have this perfect mix to kind of that path forward that Daniel always speaks about. I just have a feeling we always kind of lost, we get this miscommunication when we sometimes switch to like really short term goal. Like, okay, what can we do like in the next few days versus kind of bigger picture? But it, it's all in the same. Like I definitely see just like one huge, you know, path forward. Uh, so. But Anton, honestly, there, there's a point on which I disagree a bit, which is for research, it doesn't need, we don't need to have a web app or so on. We can do ad hoc tasks and then bring them to a pipeline. If and we here's the to. feedback that I got from search epidemiologist. And he told me that we need to create some interface that makes sense for him and people like him, because it's impossible for him to operate with Kaggle notebooks or. Sure. No, but if the request comes yeah, they... from them, if, if they tell us, okay, we want to do this analysis, let's get this data. Yeah, that we, we don't need to automate yeah. everything and so on. We can do a one-off extraction yeah, and then think about automating. Yep. Okay. I mean, I, uh, Manuel, go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm I'm not saying. Uh, well, I, I don't I don't know exactly what will be the best approach to focus on the NLP related uh, <laughs> the, the, the the data set that is built uh, by uh, Brian with his NLP that it's. Uh, Right now we have the Power BI visualization, but for the data that we have, after we got an uploading, it will it cost anything. I mean, uh, to build uh, with uh, one simple REST uh, uh, API, one web app that you simply choose which variables you want, how do you want to filter, how do you want to aggregate. I mean, I, I don't know if it, will, if, it will, if it will work out of the box, but I have made uh, things uh, like this before. And, and you can mostly reutilize, reuse 90%, uh, 95% of the code. So, I mean, for example, having something like that and saying, okay, this is all the data that you can have, mix it with everything like this, it should be a no-brainer a no to, to do. I mean, after we, the, the thing is gathering the data, after you got it, uh, is all uh, with the same format, it's all streamlined. Yeah, I kind of agree. And again, Daniel, I think you're, you're definitely correct, right? It's us working for, you know, specific specialists in the field. But what, what for example, I'm referring to as building that bridge is simply how we get our food at the door for that individual. If we're already working like we, like that, that guy is already part or girl is part of our like research group, then yes, I agree. We, we just do ad hoc and we move quickly. But the thing is, we are from, from the outsider perspectives right we're just a group of volunteers and again people don't trust us to begin with right so we need to first just simply show okay here's what we have and we could do something custom for you or something like this and now sure, sure. no but i mean of course it's the, the two it's two different things right working by ourselves or having someone mm -hmm. on board what we're working on, on by ourselves, we are setting up the pipelines trying to do all the mm -hmm. clean stuff, automated stuff. But once we get someone on board, we can also do directly, um, you know, ad hoc um, tasks, right? And it, it's just a matter to having a principal <laughs> investigator for which, mm -hmm. to, to which we provide the data that we help doing the analysis and so on. Yeah, it, okay. again, like we're all on the same page. We're just expecting different things to happen in uh, like in different time frames. Um, like I'm, I'm trying to communicate that it's, it's going to happen probably not as soon as you, Daniel, expect for a number of different factors that are involved. But if you can actually formulate specific questions and asks um, based on what you guys produced, we can funnel that to Serge and get his feedback like immediately. 
No, but that's the problem. We don't want to formulate the asks. We need someone else to formulate <laughs> yeah, the asks but for us. Here's the problem. Like I let's imagine that I'm search, right? I'm an epidemiologist and I come here to Slack and a real situation. He has no clue where to start, where to go, what to do. There are random people messaging him with various asks and he's just lost. And that's what we're really dealing with. Right, but I mean, we can provide all kinds of data or set up any kind of random analysis and ask for feedback. But it, in my opinion, it doesn't really make sense because we're not experts. We'll just do dumb stuff and then go ask yeah, but, for a feedback and the feedback will be, that doesn't work anything. Yeah, I, I'm failing to communicate this to you uh, specifically. I, I hear that you're not um, hearing me from that perspective. Maybe Anton, you, you can better so try that. So the way I see it, like, I definitely see we're speaking about exactly the same thing. Our goal is for professional epidemiologists guys I need this type of dashboard it will help me a lot right and that dashboard should contain this this, this data but right now we like the way I see it, like we have no way to bridge that gap with them and just say we can build it for you we already have the data the only way forward I see is just simply this we show something like what Daniel refers to kind of like, oh we just do something it's useless yeah it's useless in terms of how it will be used but it will be just this demonstration our team is capable of aggregating all these results we're not just showing them the list of like okay here is million of rows of all of this data we just show them here's what we have and then some professional will see oh wait a second but can you do it instead of this 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 i, I care about this factors right maybe it's a risk epidemiologist he will say you know what i want this how it will correlate and then this is where this ad hoc interaction starting to happen and we do what Daniel was speaking about. Like we are getting that milestone. I have a good uh, example. So that Randall guy, the 70 year old physician that worked with Google AI lab, worked on SARS epidemic as geospatial analyst and consultant, very, very credible guy. But even for him to jump in into the risk factors team, we had to show him what exactly we're doing and then he was like, oh, wait a second. I can tell you that the top priority risk factors from my perspective and my practice are heart disease and um, other uh, pulmonary diseases and co-occurring diseases. So that's exactly what like, has to happen. We show him something, like even if it's useless, like because we showed him a full list of all the factors that uh, Maya created, which is hundreds of factors. And he was immediately like, wait a second, I don't care about genetic factors or haplogroups or something. Like if you can focus on research, researching heart diseases, that would be useful. Does this yeah, example make sense? Yeah, it makes okay, sense. Okay, yeah. Uh, also, I mean, I understand what uh, Daniel <laughs> explained, uh, that it's better to be directed to get to the results. But to get these people to direct us, we need to provide them something first. And also, it's better, even if it's dumb, will be a better result. I don't know which is the name of the law, but they say that the internet, the best way to get uh, a question answered is to give the wrong answer. And somebody will come yes, to correct. Yeah, well Exactly. So we can make things that are easy to use, that they, they can understand. If, you, if we give them uh, a, complete, a, a, a very uh, correct analysis in a notebook that they have to install things that they don't know how to, that they have to use uh, libraries that they don't know how they work, or just coding. Most of, of doctors or epidemiologists don't know how to code. They, they know Microsoft Word, Solitaire, and Skype. So if we 70 make years old. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I mean, if we made them something usable, like, oh, can I filter like just two clicks? Oh, it's great. But can I do that? Because you, you give them uh, f the, the hold to make more questions. And especially if, if it makes no sense. They will say, yeah, it makes no sense. Why, do, why don't you do this? That is the correct thing. Say, now we, we got the answer. So I think that is after we got them, in, we should come there with them, with yeah. something that we make, knowing that it will be wrong, for them to correct us and after that maybe we can start having them directing us yeah and I think that one once like addition to this we we only need to give this wrong answer only to one guy right we need to get one guy to kind of 
correct us. And after that, we already have a good answer to show others and get attracted more people. So we won't be like this idiot of kind of like, oh, we're just throwing something at the wall, right? And then it sticks. No, we just do it once. Get one guy kind of correct us saying like, oh, you know, this is how it's supposed to be differently. But for us, it's okay. We just change a couple of parameters within our pipeline. We get the correct answer. Boom. We have a really good published result. And now it's much easier to communicate with the rest of the field and just, you know, blast the same way we kind of blast yeah, right yeah, now yeah. to get volunteers. We'll get more of a professional people. Makes sense. So we'll have to set up a showcase analysis to get us started. Yep. All right. Sounds great, guys. I think just the fact that we've <laughs> just reached the common understanding on this is great. And I think it will also help other teams, uh, you know, better understand what, what the real goals of the first submissions are. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we have a couple of next calls with other teams. So I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to upload the recording shortly too. All right. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Happy Sunday. Thanks. Thanks. Nice one.